Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad about it on this Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Then Samuel took a stone, set it up between Mitzvah and Shin, and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Amen. This time, our document will lead us in our devotional period at this time. Amen. 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 Good morning, Ebenezer. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall be glad and rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Praise the Lord. God is so good. We're so good to see all the beautiful mothers out there today. Amen. Oh, we're so grateful for so thankful for you. You know, because boy, if it wasn't for the mothers in the world, where would we be? Mama will be with you. Amen. 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 So we just thank God for all the mothers today. We thank you for just being who you are. Amen. Amen. And always being there when nobody else is there. Amen. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord today for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one who said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. 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 God is such a good God. God, he's good all the time. Amen. Amen. Join in up I'll sing the song this morning. Jesus is on the name.
this to all generations, all the way down. Hallelujah. Did anybody come to praise the Lord today? Or did y'all come to praise the Lord today? Hallelujah. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know
upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Are y'all awake in here? He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up the everlasting doors. Because he's so great, we ought to be able to say glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, the same to the glory of God.
presence of the Lord. And I like that verse that says, I feel better. So much better since I've turned all of my burdens over to the Lord. Amen. Uh, prayer of vacation will be given by Dr. Cheryl Williamson, as well as the word in scripture by Dr. Cheryl Williamson. And then we're going to have Mother's Day tribute by our First Lady, uh, Sister Juanita. Amen.
She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of the idleness. Yeah. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Her husband also, and he praises her. Yeah. Many daughters done virtuous, but thou shalt excel them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own words praise her in the gates. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. You may be seen. Ebenezer Baptist Church, Happy Mother's Day. You get to a certain age, you gotta take off your glasses when you read. But I'm blessed that I can still read. Amen. Amen. Mother's Day. A shout out to all the mothers. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day, who wear the badge of food stains and juice stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, fell adoptions and children run away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, with hopes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Amen. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate you. To those who have disappointment, disappointments, heartache, distance with your children. Come on, we sit with you. Yeah. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. Yeah. To those who experience abuse in their own mother's hands, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, yeah. overall testing of our children, we are better for having you in our midst. For those of you who have aborted your children, we remember them on this day. For those mothers who are single, who long to be married, and mothering their own children, we mourn with you the life that you have not turned out the way you thought it would be. For those step-parents who we walk with you through this complex path, to those who are empty nesters in the midst of this upcoming year, we, re we grieve and we rejoice with you. Yes. To those whose children are placed up for adoption, we commend you for your unselfishness and remember that you hold your child in your heart. Yes. Yes. And to those who are pregnant with new life, yeah. we both expect who are expecting and surprising 
we anticipate with you yes. to all the mothers who every day go through the trials and tribulations of being a mother. May God continue to keep you and bless you on this journey of motherhood. Amen.
celebrate this uh, Mother's Day. Uh, do solicit your prayers for uh, Pastor Alton Shields. He's the pastor of Mount Sinai Baptist Church. Uh, he had to quickly fly out of town to uh, minister to his mother who has been placed in hospice care. And so that's a, a dreadful thing to lose your mother on Mother's Day. And so be in prayer for the Shields family. Also be in prayer for Deaconess Mary Lyde. Uh, she is out of town this morning. She had a death in her family Amen. as well. So we pray God's blessings upon uh, her family and uh, traveling mercies as well. Amen. Uh, we want to keep uh, all of those who are sick uh, in our prayers. Let's keep Deacon uh, Carlton Mathis in our prayers. Deacon uh, Ralph Young. Uh, Deacon James Walker and all of those members of our congregation who are sick and are in the need of prayer. Amen. Uh, certainly we're glad to see Sister Ruby Carter in the building today. Amen. Uh, uh, Sister Irene Mitchell. We're glad to see Sister Amber putting all the building in the building. Amen. Amen. And uh, glad to see all of you as we celebrate. Uh, and we certainly want to keep it rolling. I know some of y'all have to be at dinner and all that kind of stuff. And so we want to keep the train rolling. So the choir is coming. Thank God for Minister Stephen Wilkins and uh, Mr. Decorate, our associate ministers, our ushers, our deacon, and our trustees, and our audio and video ministry. God bless you. God keep you.
reminding us that we do have someone we can hold on to in these rough and perilous times. I want to call our attention back to the 31st chapter of Proverbs verses 10 and 12 10 through 12 Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 12 it says who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On this Mother's Day, I want to preach from the subject, God's Wonder Woman. God's Wonder Woman. If you have or you have had a God-fearing, hard-working mother in your life, then you know what a Wonder Woman looks like. Talking to man, I was telling him something my grandmother had said and he said, your grandmother's still alive? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, man, you don't know how blessed you are. I said, yes, I do. You don't know my grandma. Amen. And I said, not only is my grandmother still here, my mother's still here, and a whole lot of adopted mothers are here. I know what a Wonder Woman looks like. There are many folk, however, who did not see that blockbuster movie, Wonder Woman, in 2017. But they really didn't have to because they have the real, live, true version of Wonder Woman right in front of them. And they see her in live and in living color every day. The character of Wonder Woman was created in 1941 by DC Comics. She was the subject of a television series in the 1970s. Had her own cartoon, and as I mentioned before, in 2017, was featured on the big screen as a full-length feature action movie. Wonder Woman was created at a time when a princess was expected to live in a tower waiting for a handsome prince to sweep her away. The character of Wonder Woman appeared on the scene doing the impossible, fighting injustice, and displaying amazing power. The comic version of Wonder Woman is a fictional woman who possesses beauty, skill, and strength. She fights injustice and protects the innocent. She was as beautiful as Aphrodite, Wise as Athena, stronger than Hercules, and swifter than Mercury. In many ways, she sounds like the Wonder Woman we know and grew up with. The Wonder Woman we know seems to have superhuman strength. Because when we are weak, she's always building us up. Uh, she has superhuman speed because she gets everything that needs to be done, done, and done on time. She must have lassos of truth because she can always tell when we are not telling the truth. She's able to talk to our animals and the, our animals understand her. She has a sword which sometimes looks like a switch or a belt or anything she can get her hands on so she can whip out her hands. Mothers are wonders to us because we have never been able to figure out how she has been able to do all 
that she does. She is a wonder woman. Because she can kiss a cut finger and the hurt seems to go away. She's a wonder woman. Because we are marveled at the fact that her advice always seems to come true. She's a wonder woman. Because she always seems to have eyes in the back of her head and discover those things that we thought she did not see. She's a wonder woman. Because she seems to have a special sensitivity that makes her hear things and see things and feel things in ways that are mysterious to those who are not mothers. When a mother is a godly mother, her acts and her deeds may be amazing, but they are less of a wonder when we realize that God made her and equipped her in wonderful ways. Amen. The psalmist picked up on it in Psalm 139 verse 14. He says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. Yes. Ebenezer, I stop by to tell you that a godly mother is truly a wonder woman. As believers, we praise God yeah. for blessing our lives with godly mothers yeah. who have nurtured us and given us life and then turned around and brought us to the altar of God so that we can experience an abundant life in Christ. Yeah. Our text for this Mother's Day focuses on the attributes of what is described as a virtuous woman. Virtue in this context refers to moral and mental qualities combined with the spirit of love and industry. Yes, the entire chapter is devoted to the advice given to a son searching for an ideal woman. The ideal godly woman is truly a wonder woman. She is described as good because of her character because of her capacity to love her family and serve and serve mankind. The entire 31st chapter of Proverbs describes Wonder Woman in a very detailed analysis that leaves little to the imagination. There are four character traits that are unique to this virtuous woman found in the text. This verse notes strength Honor, wisdom, and kindness as her identifying marks. Strength in this sense is not a physical measure, but it is a measure of will and fortitude. It is the capacity to continue even when things seem like they're not going to work out. Likewise, the virtuous woman is one who has a sense of humor and has impeccable integrity. It is her quest to do the right thing and to carry and present herself in an honorable fashion. An important part of her character is her ability to act wisely and to make prudent decisions that are in the best interest of her family. Wisdom is not a measure in the text of her intellect or her scholarship, but it's in her ability to weigh available options and act responsibly. Finally, her character is marked by her capacity to show kindness to everybody in word and in deed. This passage gives us a picture of God's wonder woman, that virtuous woman. And if we look closely at the two verses of this text, it may give us an even clearer picture of why a godly mother is called that wonder woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proverbs 31 verses 25 through 26 touches on all four. It says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. 
She opened her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. These truths are taught by every good mother in the world and they are absorbed by her children. And, and so the first thing I want to tell you is that a God's wonder woman is strong. Good mothers teach their children to be strong because they are strong. Strength in this sense is not a physical measure. It is a measure of will and fortitude. It is the capacity to continue on when it appears impossible or improbable that success will result. This is the spirit of Ephesians chapter 6 when Paul said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong mothers persevere and inspire strength in their children who have witnessed the strength in difficult times. It is a strength drawn from the well of God's power. The world might beat mama down, but the strength of the Lord will pick mama up. When she is weak, God will make her strong. Yes, God's wonder woman is a woman of strength. Secondly, God's wonder woman is wise. Good mothers teach their children to act wisely and they do it themselves. When they know what to do, they act accordingly. When they don't know what to do, they ask somebody who is spiritually wise so that they can make the right decision in the best interest of the family. Wisdom uh, is not a measure of her intellect or her scholarship, but her ability to weigh available options and act responsibly. Amen. Acting wisely is a truth that touches many areas of life. Mm -hmm. If in love, you ought to act wisely. Yeah. In money matters, you ought to act wisely. Yeah. In business affairs, you ought to act wisely. In life pursuit, you ought to act wisely. And when you're trying to know God, you show sure enough ought to act wisely. Much of mother's wisdom comes from learning from her own mistakes. But then some of those things she learned uh, using mother's wit. And mother's wit is something that God gives every godly woman. Thirdly, God's wonder woman is honorable. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. That's a truth taught by millions of mothers all over the world as they encourage their children to live their lives in ways that demonstrate integrity, dignity, and respect. The godly mother is one who has a sense of honor and impeccable integrity. It is her quest to do the right thing and to carry and present herself in an honorable fashion. Many children have heard their mother say, take pride in the way you look. You may be poor, but you ain't got to be dirty. She promotes the dignity of giving an honest day's labor for an honest day's pay and refusing charity unless it is unavoidable. Fourthly, God's wonder woman is kind. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the golden rule. A godly truth that good mothers follow. It is called, it is a call to compassion. Godly mothers are compassionate toward others. And they demonstrate that kindness to their children through their acts and deeds. Many children have fond memories of their mother's visiting hospitals and preparing food for sick folk or giving help to the less fortunate. Good mothers literally define the word kindness. She is considerate of the feelings of others. 
Somehow mothers can feel the pain of other folk both inside and outside of her family. She can sympathize and empathize with the losses and frustrations of others and is always ready to listen to help and support. That's God's wonder woman, y'all. Amen, amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we must consider uh, that the Wonder Woman in your family has one thing that the comic book character does not have. And that is, is that she knows the Lord and she knows the Lord for herself. Yes, your brother may know him. Your sister may know him. Your cousin may know him. Your uncle might know him. Your, your auntie might know him. Your friend might know him. But you better know that you know that you know that you really know him for yourself. You can know him for yourself. While the comic book Wonder Woman knew all the Greek gods, she did not know the Lord God Almighty. Oh yeah, she knew Zeus and Apollo, but she didn't know the Lord. She knew Posimus and Athena and Thor, but she didn't know the Lord. She had a comic book claim to immortality, but the godly woman who knows the Lord has true immortality. A godly woman is a wonder woman. Amen. But it should not be a wonder that a woman who knows the Lord lives a blessed life because her life is one that knows what it means to trust in the Lord. Yeah. A godly mother knows that if she puts life's concerns in God's hands, he will make a way out of no way. A godly mother knows that when she has fallen down, God will pick her up again. A godly mother knows that when she has failed, God will give her another chance. A godly mother knows that when she is weak, God will renew her strength. A godly mother knows that if she can wait on the Lord, he'll be a refuge in the time of trouble. The Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not get weary, shall walk and not faint. The secret of the godly mother's ability is that she has learned to be still and let God work things out for her good. Amen. Ebenezer, I came by to tell you that if you let God work it out, Amen. mountains will be made low. Amen. If you let God work it out, valleys shall be exalted. If you let God work it out, crooked places shall be made straight. If you let God work it out, rough places shall be made smooth. Oh yes, he'll work it out if you let him. And as I close, I'm reminded of a story about a mother who told her children when they were young that she wanted them to trust in the Lord and he would direct their path. Yes, sir. To her two daughters, she said, she said, trust God. And he'll make you a wonder woman. Yeah. And when you get grown, I want you to bring me something back I can be proud of. Right. To her son, she says, son, I want you to trust God. And if you trust God, he'll make you a superman. Amen. And if you trust God, he will always give you strength. Yeah. When you get grown, son, I want you to bring me something back I can be proud of. Right. Well, as the story goes, many years passed. The children came home on Mother's Day to give her a report on the progress of their lives and to present her with Mother's Day gifts. One daughter said, Mother, I'm a successful businesswoman and I have a successful career and you taught me to bring you something, so Mama, I'm bringing you one of my business cards. Did y'all get that? 
business card. Second daughter said, Mama, I graduated from college with my PhD. I'm a professor at the university. I've done what you ask. I'm bringing you something back. Here's a copy of my doctorate degree to put on your wall. Finally, the son came in. Unlike his sisters, the son dropped out of school, became an alcoholic, and stayed in and out of jail. But on Mother's Day, y'all, the family was surprised to see him come home. He wasn't drunk, he was sober, all cleaned up, and well-groomed, and looking very good. He said, Mama, I didn't succeed in business. I don't have my own business, nor did I graduate with a PhD. In fact, I wasted much of my life drinking and drugging and fast living. He said, but mama, one day as I sat in an alley and drank the last drop of my bottle, I heard your voice speaking to me, saying, trust in the Lord and he will bring you out. He said, I gave my life to God right in that alley, and it's been five years, mama, that I have not touched a drink, but I checked the empty bottle. I don't have a business card. I don't have a doctorate degree. All I have is an empty bottle and a full testimony about what the Lord can do for you. Mama, I want to thank you for not giving up on me. Mama, I want to thank you for putting me in God's hands. Every child ought to thank their mama for putting you in God's hands. For when we're in God's hands, He'll be right by our side. When we're in God's hands, He's with us in the morning and He's with us in the midnight hour. When we're in God's hands, what used to bother us won't bother us no more. When we're in God's hands, He'll be with us when we're up and He'll be with us when we're down. Shout hallelujah and give God the praise. Ain't it all right? I said, ain't it all right? Thank God. Thank God for God's Wonder Woman. Thank God for Wonder Woman. Thank God for Godly Mother who put us in the hands of God. Thank God for Wonder Woman. The doors of the church stand ajar. If you're here today, you ought to come. Give the Lord your life. Open the door of your heart and let him come in. He's willing, he's able to help you. He'll carry you through. You ought to love him today. Turn your business over to him. Allow him to straighten it out. If you trust him, he'll work it out. If you love him, he will bless you. Let us stand together. The door is open. Let's stand. Let's stand together. Oh, yes, I really. Yes, I really, really
couple of minutes, I do want to uh, make mention uh, that we will have our citywide hymn fest, hymns for him, May the 28th, 2023, at 3.30 p.m. at Denver Seminary. And of course, uh, the rehearsal schedule is May the 20th, uh, 6 to 8, May the 26th and 27th, 6 to 8. The rehearsal locations are at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, and we'll be sure, uh, Sister Maddox, next week that this flyer is in the bulletin next week. Uh, but Reverend Black wanted us to make mention of that. I uh, also want to uh, make mention, uh, well, thank you all for praying for uh, Sir Kalen. <clears throat> he can hear a little bit now and then not turned all the way up because he's got to get used to sound. And so his hearing uh, equipment is on very, very low when he keeps them on. Uh, when noise gets on his nerves, he takes them off and throws them. Uh, so we've got to get something uh, to have a special headband for those uh, elements. And so we want to try to get that. But y'all pray for us as we pray for him. But we pray for hearing and he can hear. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Didn't our choir do a marvelous job on today? Amen. We thank God for our choir. Uh, we thank God for our musicians, uh, for our directresses. Uh, Sister Dogan and Sister Washington, and we thank God for all of you. Happy Mother's Day. And don't forget to acknowledge the Wonder Woman in your life. Amen. Uh, Reverend Rose will come and he will pronounce the benediction. Glad to see all of you uh, in the sanctuary, especially our visitors. We're glad to have you with us today. And those of you who are worshiping with us virtually, we praise God for all of you. Amen. May we stand for the benediction. I would just like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. And as I read this passage of scripture, I want it to take heed in your hearts as you go throughout the week. Because this is what a mother's love teaches us. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not consist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Lord, on this day, which we honor your brothers, may we love and cherish the special for the poor and mourn us, who have nurtured us, who have prayed for us, for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you, who formed and knitted us each in our mother's womb. We pray and give you each long strength. We ask you to be the daily bread of a tired mother's. May each mother find rest in you. And Lord of all, we thank you for your mother, Mary. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.